Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the second session in our Day of Dent. This session celebrates Tom Dent as a poet. If you guys have not picked up his poetry, you're missing out. Coltrane's Alabama for me is a personal favorite. So we are here with the power of jazz and place in Tom Dent poetry, a workshop with Sky Jackson. And the genesis of this event was basically our events committee chair, Liz Granite, who is actually going to be reading in this workshop, said we should do a workshop, like a small, intimate, virtual thing. And it was so beautiful when we did it back in August that we said, let's keep working these poems that emerge from this workshop and do them on our day of dent. So that's how this happened. I'm so incredibly fortunate to be here with these amazing poets. I wish you all were here to cheer them on with me, but you can cheer them on virtually by posting likes, comments, questions in the comments section. We can show those on screen and really let our poets feel the love as you guys interact with them. And without further ado, I am going to introduce Sky Jackson, who has become a longtime friend of words and music and One Book, One New Orleans. Not only has she done things with One Book, One New Orleans all throughout the year, but last year she participated in Words and Music's Poets Respond to Gentrification, which is when I first heard her work, which you should all hear and experience. One of the ways you can do that is by picking up her chat book, A Faster Grave, which won the 2019 Antenna Prize. And you can pick that up from our festival bookshop powered by Tubby and Coos. Sky has also been recognized by poets and writers as a New Orleans poet to watch. She's a native New Orleanian whose work has appeared or is forthcoming in Rattle, Xavier Review, Rigorous, and elsewhere. She also has a law degree. So she's one of those people who can really do it all in all the fields. So we are so excited to welcome the talented, multi-talented, can do it all, Sky Jackson to this festival. Thank you so much for that wonderful introduction, Megan. I'm so happy to be here with Words and Music and I'm so excited uh, for everyone to see the work um, that is gonna be read today. Um, I have some brief words about, um, about how we're gonna do things today and how this all came about. Um, so I just wanna begin by welcoming you all here. Um, back in August, these writers and I gathered together to celebrate Tom Dent and his writings through our own responses to his work. Uh, Tom Dent was an impresario. He wrote poetry, plays, essays, and even the occasional short story. However, though his work varied, his concerns remained largely the same. He focused on the power of place and community in New Orleans. His work also hinged on the impact of memory in our lives. So in order to dive into his work and these concerns, we examined Dent's life, read his words, and listened to music that moved him. I presented prompts to the workshop group and asked them to interrogate Dent's work as they began to examine the impact of place and memory within their own lives and writing. What you will see and hear today are the glorious results of those brave self-examinations. These writers fiercely and deftly created work that speaks both to community and also to the power of the mind to transport us through the impact of the written word. In the spirit of Dent, they will share their powerful work with you today. Um, I would like to begin this reading by opening the space with Dent's own words and poetry as I did when we met the, for the first time this past August. At the end of the reading today, I will close us out with one, two. Uh, the poem that I will be reading for you guys today is called Vermont for the, re for the members of the Goddard Writers Workshop. The spewing ghetto of Hartford spills out into the rolling hills of Vermont, place of winding highways, hidden streams and lakes that we came there beside that hill to argue about the major contradictions of America is Hartford Ghetto's hold on us. But then some of us were lonely people 
and we stared out at each other, sharing something of ourselves, just relaxing down and sharing. And somehow we made it through without too many promises, without too many lies, without too many manifestos. It was a good time. Our first reader up today is the wonderful, amazing Stacy Valcoon, who is also a longtime friend of the Words and Music Festival. And so I'm so excited for you guys to hear the poem that she wrote to share with you today. Thank you so much, Sky. Um, and I'm so glad you read Vermont. That's one of the poems in our workshop that stuck with me the most. Mm -hmm. um, three poems that generated in this workshop. The first is an epistolary poem, a letter poem, which um, Sky walked us through. And the prompt was thinking of your mind as a house and the people who live in your memories as occupants of that house. And this is a poem about a first night spent back in an old house called Dear Memory. Mm -hmm. Dear Memory, I wouldn't write you this letter until I was forced. Dear Memory, won't you leave me alone? If a poem is a house, then I hate vacuuming even more. If a poem is a yellow house in the seventh ward, then the night blooming angel trumpets need to be cut back, but I didn't bring clippers. If a stanza is a room, then I've turned down the light switch. Don't you know I've scoped hotels nearby? For 84 bucks a night, each of your doors can stay locked. No need to twist open discolored blinds or drop a ring of keys onto a familiar kitchen table. I mean, I was optimistic. I mean, I was searching for a corkscrew, but uncovered the wedding album instead. I should have emptied the drawers. I look around, I looked around, drew out the whole bottle. I mean, I'm keen and keening. I mean, I thought I missed you, assumed my skin had puckered up, thirsty for only this touch, but now I know. A glass of water tastes the same anywhere. One stamp is all it takes. A paper cut on my tongue. I mean, I will fold up these tercets and lick the steepled roof of a blue lined envelope, close it all, all of it, everything up. Another line we talked about Tom of Tom Dance is music is our greatest strength. And in literature and libations yesterday, Andy Barbelli talked about how bars are where we go um, to meet each other in what he called a really real space and share ourselves mm. with each other. So another neighborhood poem that was begun that same workshop day uh, takes place at the corner of Bayou and Broad. It's called Benediction. Blessed is the crab snapped in the trap for the smell of a chicken thigh. Blessed is the deck of cards, the pull of a hermit, two lovers, a fool, and blessed is crawfish on Fridays, Saturdays, Sundays, when the boys take to the dome all in white. Blessed is my bartender, Al, who walks his dog past my house, but will never pick herbs without asking, waiting instead for me to insist. For he will use them on Taco Wednesday, for he will keep my extra sweater on a hook before behind the counter, for he will cook us dinner on Thanksgiving, and he will pour me a shot of whiskey when I tell him the good news, too, when it's bad. And when I've left my husband and I'm dating again, Al says to bring any new boys by so he may pass judgment, but blessed is my foolish sense for trouble, and so blessed is the one who should have dressed better, the one who wouldn't pick up the check, the one who wanted to suck my toes and the neighbors and the neighborhood trees and the neighbor with a peach tree who said next year baby pick as many as you'd like and blessed is that wide water mississippi a name that drips with disappointment its slow rush to meet the salty gulf lord bless our muddy past bless the future also muddy and all of us who swim in it lord 
keep our toes from touching the murky bottom and bless the creatures who wander the muck, small but adorned with claws that pinch and how we peel back their tails, sucking our own fingers burned pink and bless the hermit crabs that house themselves in trash. Bless them, bless all of us who have lost, who have outgrown. Bless the search for some new love to crawl into, to call home. Wow. Um, one of the last, I'll just quickly do this short one. We talked about finding, writing about a place that brings you peace. Thinking of Tom Dent's poem, sorry, I had to find it in my book. As these warm mundane days pass, mm. um, this is Pearl River. Even after the sun lifts and does its best to burn off the fog risen around our clearing, it clings to the banks. Bruised by your hip bones, by the hard ground, still asleep, you sense my wake and pull me close. We are tidal, we are brine. My body wants to be by your body. Why can't we, if I'm trying to be honest, this is a story, a quick prayer for the oysters purchased last night from the bed of a pickup truck to shuck for breakfast. I don't know the difference between a white oak and a water oak, between Deer Island and Cedar Key. Is this goldenrod? Is this gold? I'd call it an abad, but neither of us leaves. You are sharp, I gleam. Thank you so much. Wow, thank you, Stacy. That was so beautiful. I, I love the way you use the prompts and really that theme of community is just so present in your work and in these poems and it's just so lovely. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. Really, really amazing. Um, our next reader today is going to be Joshua Benitez. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for having me here. Uh, it's really wonderful. This is my first poetry reading, so I want Welcome. to Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> I think I'm going to start with the writing prompt that we had. Uh, what calm moments are being invaded by darker feelings? Mm. <clears throat> Great Aunt Florinda Amador. She hurries me along. Benga, benga. She takes my hands and guides me down North Villarigan, Spain. Outside the door is a house that sits empty and shambled, always. The sun is crisp and sprightly, broken up by clouds, like the trees break up the sidewalks. Watch your step. Florinda is old, yet she moves with purpose. The St. Rook Market. We order food that she'll cook for her church congregation. Everyone knows you go to Florinda for the tamales, except me. Me, tired, hungry, and impatient kid, begging to go home, home away from the smell of fish. Ugh, ugh, is what I think when I pass by the monstrosity it is living proof of injustice. I miss my aunt. I miss that house outside of her house. It was always empty. It was always in shambles. It was. I wish I could smell the fish again to watch her make tamales again. It's okay. My cousin's got the recipe. I'll make hundreds, maybe thousands. She guides me in her old age. Her spirit guides me as I age, while my hands wrestle with the smell of the masa. So, uh, yeah, that was uh, the first one. Um, and there's one more that I would like to read. Um, 
This one's shorter, and this one is a response to Coltrane's uh, Alabama, uh, Tom Dent's writing on Coltrane's Alabama. Alabama. How much do you know about Alabama? I can show you what it sounds like. I can play what it looks like. Jazz, more than what you hear. The two fives are just a metaphor. You think you know what I'm saying, and you don't. You have to feel what I'm saying, and you aren't going to like it. And uh, yeah, that, that's what I have for today's reading. And I just want to say thank you so much for having me here to be a part of this reading. Of course, thank you so much for reading that, Josh. And I really appreciate, um, I really appreciate the last poem because you come from a musician's background, you know, and so it's amazing to kind of see the way you observe the the Coltrane Alabama poem, and then kind of bringing your own musical inclinations into that and perspective. So thank you so much, and and we all love the Florinda piece, like that is, just, <laughs> you know, we just all love it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, our next reader today is going to be the wonderful, fabulous Liz Granite. Thank you so much for that, Sky, and thank you for hosting the workshop in the first place to um, to bring this vision to life and to unleash our inner poet. For me, like this is definitely my first poetry reading, and um, I'm honored to be in a group of, of true poets, um, especially being being led by a great like you. Aww. So um, I'm going to read two poems today. Uh, I think what has stood out to be most about Tom Dent's work is the sense of place and how I feel like I'm right there wherever it is that he's describing. Um, so the first one that I'm going to read uh, was written in response to the um, Vermont poem, um, focusing on a sense of place. And this is called Blueberry Ledges. Mm. Blueberry Ledges is far too sweet a name for the flavor of this climb. Feet dance with roots and rocks as handfuls of granite haul this aching body upward, skyward, toward the top of Maine's greatest mountain, a proclamation of the Penobscot people's proven promise. In this wild exchange, surrendering sweat to gain elevation, the briny tang of my upper lip drags my mind. 5,000 feet down, 2,000 miles south, and a foot or two below sea level, making me wonder, where yet? <laughs> All right, and my second poem um, was written in response to introspection number two, which for anyone who is watching, if you haven't heard Sky Jackson read this poem, you are missing out. It is gorgeous. It's on the One Book, One New Orleans Facebook page. And um, her, her voice, her lyrical cadence adds even more um, dynamic to this poem. Okay. Night wraps her glittering blanket around this sandy strip of beach, hollow center of crowded woods, hiding secretly a haven for those who have had it up to here with man unkind. Sanctuary, sovereignty, the furs whisper. I breathe it in. Flesh reforms to fill this cradle dug of earth that I sink into with a belly full of chanterelles and tubers, decadent abundance feasted from the forest floor. Wind drags a finger across the depression where glacier melt lies, transformed, transfigured by time and light, retreating from its triumphant stance into quiet reflection and invitation. 
Curious eyes scan the sky almost too bright with stars. And I wonder why, why we ever traded all this for an electrified existence. Thank you. Wow, Liz, that was incredible. Oh, I love the first line of the second poem, Night Wraps Her Glittering Blanket. <laughs> oh, that's just so beautiful and gorgeous. And also the first poem and, you know, this focus on taste, you know, memory and taste. I think it's just, there's such a lovely energy to that first poem. Thank you so much for sharing that. Pleasure. Thank you. <laughs> um, our next reader today, is gonna be Sunny Miro. And he's actually gonna read one of the poems that we've been talking about today, uh, Coltrane's Alabama by Tom Dent. Thanks for having me. I've had computer issues, which I finally resolved by getting a new computer. So I've been following along and this is my chance to finally contribute to the group. So I want to read Coltrane's Alabama. Yes, Coltrane, it is a woeful song you sing. Times of rain and memories of fields rolling by from the southerner. And the loneliness, the shacks, the curious staring black faces, the rain, the rain filled land red mud sticks to my brain shards of broken glass puncture my heart it is rain time woe time and the flood cannot wash the blood away mm. and that prompted me to write this my heart aches and drowsy numbness pains my senses. I cannot see what flowers are at my feet. I just want to fade far away, dissolve and quite forget. The weariness, the fever, the fret, like the murmuring of flies on summer eves. Where men sit and hear each other groan, where palsy shakes a few sad last gray hairs. Mm. Youth grows pale and dies oh to think to be to think is to be full of sorrow here there is no light i've been half in love with easeful death called it many names now more than ever it seems rich to die and yet we live we die and death not ends it thank you wow sunny that was incredible. I just wrote down one of the lines that you read. Uh, I'm, I've been half in love with an easeful death. Ah, oh, gorgeous. And the way you read the Dent poem, you really just brought um, that mournful tone, you know, to the work that I thought was so beautifully read. Um, I so appreciate it, your, your contribution and that just everything you did was Phenomenal. Thank you so much, Sunny. You are so welcome. <laughs> uh, let's see who's up next. And we have Kiana up next. I'm so excited for you guys to hear her work. <laughs> Hi, thank you for having me here. I'm super excited. Um, I do want to thank Sky for hosting this workshop. I have went a whole summer without writing poetry and to hear somebody like Tom Dent and just hear who he was and his um, contributions to his writing, especially like coming from New Orleans. And it was it was just very awe-inspiring. And I also learned from um, Sky's workshop, I forgot how like important music was to my writing process. So I got a lot of inspiration out of this and I'm gonna read two pieces to get today that I hope y'all really enjoy. So the first one I am going to re read is actually after, um, culture into Alabama and it really was inspired that the um the song that Sky played afterwards. I hope you like it. <laughs> it's titled Just Drowning. Sometimes I wonder how people feel when walking out in rain. 
To me, it feels like I'm getting baptized all over again, or the time I drowned at Blue Bayou, or the time I walked through flood water, or the time I saw black bodies face down floating in oblivion, floating into their destinies. I realized I'm scared of drowning, but I realized I'm not scared of death, just the way of dying and that's drowning. Tom made me think, Maybe I'm scared of drowning because my ancestors did, cross the Atlantic unwillingly, thought they could swim back to freedom, thinking of their face down bodies, the oceans rejecting their bodies, their bodies, my body too flavorful for the blue ocean to digest. When I was baptized, I felt the freezing sensations of that holy water, cold to the bone, but my lungs were on fire, silently choking, but I was supposed to be saved. How am I supposed to be scared of drowning if I was born in a bowl city, filling with water every other year and they let us drown? Mm. In church, wade in the water is a hymn of joy, but it's the hymn I hear when I drown in my flooded dreams. I'm surprised I am still here, swimming, just about drowning. Mm. That's the end of that one. Um, I will say after I first made a few lines of this poem and I read it, um, Sky was like, I think you have, um, do you have like a fear of drowning? And I felt so red in that moment. I said, oh my God, I've been discovered. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but yeah, it was a revelation for me. I never said it out loud. And so I think I wrote that poem. So um, this next poem, it is actually after um, inspection number two for Bobby. And it was also after another song that we had heard that inspired me. So I hope you like this one as well. This one is titled Floating. It's one of my new favorite uh, poetry babies as well, just because I wanted to go really far. And I think it really, um, it really follows, I think, that time didn't or that I was uh, looking for. So um, a feeling not even water can evoke since we are so used to fighting the troubled waters. So scared of drowning, but we had died a thousand watery deaths. Our ancestors are preserved by the waves of the Mississippi. Sitting on the levee, waves wash over me, now floating alongside them. Each puff taken has me floating higher than the moment before, close to touching the heavens, but the mud keeps me from the heavenly heights, haunted. After being baptized by, by the muddy streams, I can hear music, each instrument playing separately, creating their own tune in this old world, separating the cacophonous melody, each sound worthy within a life of its own. This water holds a plethora of the city's culture, like a gumbo nobody wanted a bowl of. Flashbacks of the ripped apart houses, bent cars, and dirty dolls, drowned into oblivion amongst bodies floating into their destinies. I hope you guys enjoyed that. But those are my poems and I'm really proud of them and happy that Sky and Tom didn't open my eyes. <laughs> so thank you. Kiana, that was incredible. I love that you let the water do what the water needed to do. You know, I think your concerns are so, oh, they're so prescient. And so of this time and of this moment that we're having, you know, like there's this feeling of community, community, but also of isolation as well, that I think um, is really conveyed through your work. And I really, I just so moved and touched by, by what you just read. So thank you so much. Um, so guys, that's all the readers that we have today. Um, so if anyone has any questions or just wants to have a conversation, I think we have a lot of time left. Um, or if anyone has any more work that they wanted to read and share with the group, that is fine too. Um, but yeah, I, I want to thank everyone for coming and for being a part of this and for allowing me to see your work and to hear it and to experience it, it means so much to me. Um, and so I guess I will close our community reading with another poem by Dent um, that I closed our original reading with our original workshop. Uh, let me open that up. Okay, so this poem is called, As These Warm Mundane Days Pass, for the workshop. As these warm mundane days pass, my wish 
that whatever I learned from the elders be passed on to you. Your gain, what little I know. Like our musicians, master of the ancient art, we teach each other, we teach each other. As the sun rising marks the passing of day to day, we revere memory, we revere knowledge and memory. The hard times, bitter times, good times. We learn the things we must do and must not do. May we make this strong as stone, secure as cement, this spirit, so that you too pass it on, pass it on as these warm, mundane days pass. Thank you so much, everyone. This is so wonderful. What I loved about this workshop was number one, everything you guys read. But number two, I love the fact that we've got professional poets who have books out. We've got someone, I think, going for an MFA. We've got a couple, a few people who's this is their first poetry workshop and reading ever, because I feel like that's so much in the spirit of Tom Dent, because he really did believe that all of us should come together and welcome one another's voices and really hold space for each other and respect one another and the work that we produce, because that's how we create community. And so I feel like this workshop just absolutely sort of echoes some of the writing workshops that he put together both in New York City and then later in New Orleans. Mm -hmm. So thank you for that. I'm I'm so humbled that you guys chose to spend a morning sharing Tom Den inspired poetry with words and music. Get off a clump. So <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm going to do a quick commercial. If you guys are watching, you are not watching behind a paywall, right? Everything is accessible to our community on a donation basis. One of the reasons we decided to do it that way is because Tom Dent was also very adamant about the fact that work, and especially artistic work, should not be hidden behind a wall where academics only could see it or reserved for a certain group of people, right? This should be accessible to all people. Arts are community led for the community. So we decided when we were doing words and music this year and bringing it into this virtual space to really honor that sort of vein of Tom Dent's insistence. He was insistent in many works about the fact that community was the basis of arts. So that doesn't mean we won't take your support. If you like what you see and you'd like to see more of it, go ahead and click those links in our comment section on both Facebook and YouTube. And if you're watching this later, the links are live even when we are not, so they will still work. You can also go to your PayPal account and PayPal words and music NOLA at gmail.com. You can go to your phone and text WAM20 to 44321. We are suggesting $10. We will take one or 1,000 or anything in between. And we are coming back at 1230 with something I'm so excited about. Tom Dent's Ritual Murder, performed by the No Dream Deferred Theater Company. I This was the first Dent I read, and it's going to knock your socks off. So take a quick break. Shop in the bookstore during the break, the virtual bookshop powered by Tubby and Coos, where you can find Stacy's book and Sky's book and a lot of the other books you will see featured at this festival. You can also, if you're not clicking the link in the comments section for the virtual bookshop, go to wordsandmusic.org and you will find the link on the homepage of the website. Candice, who is the powerhouse behind Tubby and Coos and also the powerhouse behind the scenes of this festival, has told me that the bookstore will remain open until Wednesday. So you folks who watch these videos on Tuesday and say, oh man, I wish I'd had a chance to get the books. You still do. 
And 10% of the proceeds from that will go to Words of Music as well, because Candace really does appreciate that this is a festival by the community, for the community, to support the community. We will see you all at 1230 for Ritual Murder. I'll talk to you soon.